Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the chemical earth module. And in today's lesson, we're gonna focus on sort of like a case study, and it will be boiling in electrolysis, and it'll be an example of a physical and a chemical change, okay? So this will be like a case study in a physical and chemical changes. Um, yeah. So electrolysis and boiling of water. So an example of the differences between chemical and physical changes can be seen with boiling and electrolysis of water. Okay, so we've all seen boiling of water, and hopefully by now you've all seen the electrolysis of water. But if you haven't, that's okay. You will still learn something from today. But it's an example of what the differences are between a chemical and a physical change. So both processes affect the water. So that's a similarity. So we're looking at the similarities and differences between the processes now. And first similarity is they both affect the water in some way. They both result in the production of A, one or more gas. Okay? And they both require energy input. So obviously you have to turn on your stove to boil water or put it in the kettle or something. And you also have to pump in electricity to make it electrolysize. Okay? So we need energy. Now the differences include electrolysis utilizes electrical energy while boiling needs heat. Okay? Um, you could use electricity, but that would just generate heat anyway. So that's the, the diff one of the major differences. Okay? Now boiling water. The process of boiling water changes the state of water from liquid to a gas. Okay? I think since we've been you know, in primary school, we've known that boiling turns water into gas. So um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, while a gas is produced, it doesn't mean that a, physical, a chemical change is happening. Remember, in the last lesson, we looked at, well, it's not just the evolution of a gas, it's the evolution of a gas with different properties to what we started with. Okay? So that's the difference here. Now, the steam has the same chemical properties as the liquid water, so it's not a chemical change. And it's easily reversed. I can easily turn steam back into water if I put it, if I let the steam hit a cold substance, a cold surface, like a plate or something. Okay? So I can condense it really easily. Now electrolysis of water, on the other hand, electrolysis uses electricity to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, like gas. And that, this is definitely a chemical change. Now two gases are produced, and it's clear that these gases have different chemical properties compared to water. Okay? Now it's really obvious, and you'll see why in a sec. Now obviously if I try to light hydrogen on fire, I can do that very easily. Um, so that's one chemical property, it ignites very quickly. Now if I try to light water on fire, that kind of just you know, spits in the face of firefighting um, theory, since the Middle Ages. Water has generally always put out fire. Um, even Pokemon tells you that. So um, you can see that water doesn't combust. So obviously the gas that we've produced has very different properties to the substance that we started with. Now that's a clear example. Okay? Now also the hydrogen gas is very light. It will tend to go upwards, whereas the steam may not go up as far as high. And oxygen um, obviously has different properties to water as well. Okay? So that concludes today's lesson on this case study, so to speak, on electrolysis and boiling of water, and an example of chemical and physical changes. Okay? So we're going to look at questions now, and hopefully it will teach you something more about electrolysis and boiling of water that you may or may not have known already. Question 6. Outline one use for electrolysis of water. Can we use electrolysis for something useful? Um, yes. So to produce hydrogen and oxygen from water for use in fuel cells. Okay. So I don't know if you've studied this yet. Um, in year 12, you'll definitely study batteries and maybe the fuel cell if your teacher is quite brave. Um, but fuel cells have always been kind of regarded as a very new technology that has the potential to you know, revolutionize the electrical industry. And a fuel cell can take hydrogen and oxygen, turn it into water, and produce electricity. 
So if you had a tank of hydrogen and a tank of oxygen, you could potentially have a, a water-emitting car just that you could drive around on your street. So fuel cells are a very, very um, exciting new technology that might um, help this whole climate change issue um, in the future. So one way to use electrolysis is to produce this hydrogen and oxygen for use in these cool new fuel cell things. Okay. Why is boiling considered a physical change despite the evolution of a gas? So we look sort of at this at the end of last lesson. The evolution of a gas as an indicator for a chemical change only applies if the gas has different properties to the original material. So remembering that it has different chemical properties to the original material. Since steam has identical chemical properties to liquid water, boiling can't be considered a chemical change because the steam has exactly the same chemical properties as the water, the liquid water. So there, it's only a physical change. There's no chemical changes at all. OK? Question 8. Write the overall equation for the electrolysis of water and compare it to the equation for the boiling of water. Okay, so water, H2O, forms hydrogen and oxygen, and it's this equation. Now to work that out, what you can do is you can simply just write what you know first. Now this is a really good way of um, sort of answering a question because chemical equations only balance in a certain number of ways. So by writing out all the things you know, you can pretty easily balance this thing up. You know that water turns into hydrogen and oxygen, okay? And you know that hydrogen and oxygen both exist as diatomic gases, because you've been studying chemistry very, very hard. Okay? Now, we balance these things, okay? Now, when I look at it for the first time, I look here and I say, look, there's two hydrogens and there's two hydrogens, so that balances, so that's good. And then I look here and it says two oxygens and one oxygen. So how do I balance that? Well, I put a two here. Okay. Now the problem is, now I've stuffed up my hydrogen. I've said there's two times two now, so there's four on this side, but there's only two on this side. And again, an easy fix, I just multiply this one by two. And then you can see that that is the same as that. Okay. So. That's one way of answering questions when you don't know what the reaction is, just by writing down all the things that you do know and then just balancing the equation. Okay? So that's how you would do that. Now for the boiling of water, all you've done is you've turned water liquid into water gas. So that's the difference. The electrolysis reaction decomposes water into its component elements, while boiling just changes the state, as you can see. So that's, the, that's how we compare the two. Okay. So it's been proposed to use electrolysis to produce hydrogen for fuel. Performing electrolysis at high temperatures is more efficient economically than at room temperature. Explain why this might be so. Okay, so this is sort of just a right out of left field for you guys. Just pulled this question um, just to try and get you thinking about electrolysis and chemical reactions in general. So it seems like high temperature electrolysis, so making the water hotter, um, seems to be better than leaving it at room temperature and electrolysizing it. So electrolysis is the consumption of electrical energy to produce chemical changes. All right? So we're consuming electrical energy to essentially produce chemical energy. Now in order to affect these changes, a certain amount of energy is needed. So we need a certain amount of energy to get um, this reaction to happen. At high temperatures, this energy can be supplied by heat, so we can reduce the amount of electrical energy that we need. So we could, you know, so let's say you need X amount of energy, and so we need X energy. We could get all of that X from electricity, or we could get maybe half a lec plus half heat. So we could get some electricity and some heat. And so we can reduce the amount of electricity that we actually use. Okay. Now, again, that, well, we're just using one form of energy instead of another. So what's the difference? Well, electricity is much more expensive than heat in nearly every country. 
actually I would say in every country. This results in a net gain in economic efficiency because we're using a cheaper form of energy to substitute for a more expensive form of energy. Okay, that's why high temperature is a little bit more efficient economically than just room temperature electrolysis. So that might be something to keep your eye out on for the future. Maybe it's something that you'd be interested in studying or looking at. Um, maybe electrolysis uh, will be the new fuel, will produce the new fuel for the future and it'll be at high temperatures. Okay. Question 10, explain why thermal decom decomposition of a mass of water is more energy intensive than electrolysis of the same mass of water. Okay. So if I was to turn electro uh, say 100 grams of water into hydrogen and oxygen by electrolysis, that would take me a lot less energy than if I was to do it by heat, if I was just to heat it up and hope that it works. Okay. So when heating the water, the mass, the entire mass of water needs to be heated. So I can't focus that heat on one molecule and break it up. I have to heat the whole thing and then, then something will happen, right? Now the energy from this heating can be taken up in various storage modes. So additionally, because I've got all these molecules, they can actually store some of that energy by vibrating, by moving, or by rotating. So they could rotate, they could move up and down, or left and right, forward and back, or they could just vibrate. And all they could do all three at once. And so they can actually store some of that energy that I'm trying to heat and use to break up bonds with. Now electrolysis, only affects singular molecules of water at a time. And so energy is not wasted in moving other uh, molecules from place to place. Okay, so that's why electrolysis may be a little bit more energy efficient in, um, to, in actually turning it into water, hydrogen, and oxygen. And so this reduces the total energy input for electrolysis because it's not having to affect the whole mass of water, just singular molecules at a time. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on our um, case study of electrolysis and boiling of water. We looked at what the difference is and why they are considered chemical and physical changes. And hopefully these questions um, were challenging um, and at least made you th start thinking about the whole idea of chemical reactions, physical changes, and chemical changes. So in the next lesson we're going to look at an actual first-hand investigation of um, decomposition of a carbonate. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.